stayed. But even while having all those opulences, they were not, they never identified it as theirs. Yes or no? And they used it in the service of the Lord as much as possible. For example, Sabha Parva Mahabharata talks about Narad Muni brings the message of Yudhishthira Maharaj. Because Narad Muni suggested to Yudhishthira Maharaj that he should perform Rajasuya Yagya. Uh, no, you should become the Samrat, the king of the whole world. And Yudhishthira was not ready, but then Narad said, well, that will give you the opportunity to actually establish uh, the position of the Supreme Lord, Lord Sri Krishna. Yudhishthira Maharaj agreed, Narad Muni comes to Lord Sri Krishna in Dwarka, and in the assembly, everyone is there. And then Nadhuni, when he proposed like this, so Lord Sri Krishna immediately asked, Why Yudhishthira Maharaj is interested in knowing Rajasi Yagya? Krishna did not approve of it in the beginning. He asked, Why? So Nadhuni said, My dear Lord, you know, he wants to establish Dharma. Nadhuni also did not answer directly. He wants to establish Dharma. So Lord Krishna laughed, Ha ha ha. You are joking. He wants to establish his supremacy. Then Nadhuni said, No, 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 not like this. Hare Krishna. There is some sound disturbance. Yes, तो दो आवाज आ रही है। हरे एक बार। नमः शिवाय। 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 नमः Hare Krishna, yeah. Oh, screen sharing chali di usme. Thik, anyways, is okay now? What was I talking about? <laughs> and then Lord Shri Krishna said, no, no, he wants his own supremacy. Then Admiral said, no, my dear Lord, he wants to establish your supremacy. Then Lord agreed. Like that. So, it's not that uh, everyone needs to be beggar. Even those who have riches, uh, you see, they are sanctioned, they are authorized. But you will see everything they did it in the service of the Lord. So when it is mentioned here, one cannot achieve the mercy of the Lord without sacrificing one's riches. The principle of giving one's wealth is discussed in various chapters in Bhagavad Gita. And one idea of giving wealth or making a contribution, we develop a little bit of renunciation by giving away to what we are most attached. Woman and wealth are the two greatest attachments. How many of you agree, disagree? Women and wealth are the greatest attachments. Yes or no? So, uh, I mean, you know, the, the our attachment to women has to be purified, you know, by properly taking to Grasta Ashram and proper training and all that. How do we purify our attachment to wealth? By engaging our wealth in the service of the Lord. So that's how. This is a principle. You cannot skip it. It doesn't matter. Kolavecha Shridhar, uh, would have 50 paisa as his earning. Even that 50 paisa, he would make 50, 50 percent, 25, and use it for the service of Ganges and 25 for himself. You cannot say, I have enough. There's no problem if you don't have enough. Give something at least. And that's what we was saying. Without it, it is not possible. And in that, there is also a principle comes, Lord doesn't see what you give. Lord sees what you keep back with you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> How much you kept back with you is what... Anyways, text number four, then Nadhuni says, again, a very interesting discussion. And he says, hey, Devahuti, uh, in due course of time, when Lord appears to you as your son, he will instruct you and will help you on your self-discovery uh, journey like that. So let me read the translation. The personality of God being worshipped by you will spread my name and fame. They will vanquish. So very interesting word, uh, word comes here. Hridya Granthim. What does Hridya Granthim mean? Does anyone know? Hridya Granthi. Hridya Granthi means... Strong the... knots of Acharya. Yes, the strong knots. Hridya Granthi. Granthi in what? Knots of what? Attachment. Is... Yeah, attachment. To what actually? It is this Hridya Granthi attachment which keeps the body and spirit together. Uh, okay, let me ask this. How many of you know the word Samadhi? What does Samadhi means? What does Samadhi means? Meditation on Lord. Okay, so Samadhi means, uh, you know, you are fixed in your consciousness at the Lotus Feet of the Lord. But have you noticed there are Samadhis also, the tombs of great devotees? What is that then? 
one samadhi you're talking about is samadhi when you're fixed at the lotus feet of the Lord. But there is actual samadhi when you go to Jagannath Puri, Haridas Thakur samadhi. When you go to Mayapur, so many samadhis are there. When you go to Vindavan, you know, Mayapur has a push of samadhi and Vindavan has actual samadhi of Srila Prabhupada. What is that samadhi? You know, so there are not one, there are four kinds of samadhis. That's not my subject matter for today. We'll discuss some other time. But the point here is, Haridya Granthi, <coughs> to help in our Vedic culture, uh, a system has been created, at least at the time of death, the tight knots of attachment which we have built towards the body identification to break those bonds. Therefore, the body is burnt. The body is burnt. When you don't have matter anymore, then the soul can move on to the next destination. And the example comes in the seventh canto, King Suyujana, if you remember, if I'm correcting the name properly, he had died, you know, and uh, uh, according to Vedic culture, if somebody dies in the daytime, before the, before the sunset, his body has to be cremated. If somebody dies after sunset, the next morning before the sunrise, the body has to be cremated. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And uh, in his case, uh, nobody cremated the body and he had many wives and the wives are not allowing that also. And then, you know, Yamaraji comes as a young boy. Remember that story? There comes seventh canto. And then finally, when he speaks the words of wisdom, and then, and what had happened, that's not the point, that's the second point. What had happened? Because his body was not cremated, he became a ghost. He did not got a next body only. And he became a ghost and was wondering about it. So this Hridya Granthi is a concept. Uh, you can call it as a Vedic concept, which defines how a spirit remains attached to matter. This is called as Hridya Ganti. It is not just a subject matter of some attachment. Now, why did I discuss this? So when you are living your life as a spiritualist, we should live our life in such a way that we do not cultivate newer tastes for the material life. Because we are building up or we are uh, tightening up this knot more and more. Our practice of spiritual life should loosen it, which means our taste in material activities should go down. But our taste in material activities, our taste for material endeavors, for you know, seeing nice places, eating different kind of foodstuffs, listening to all kind of music, if that is increasing. Our Hidya Ganti is increasing, not reducing. So that is something, you know, therefore, in the Jnani Marga, you'll see that they leave everything and they go to the forest. They will not eat Puri Halwa on Sunday because Sunday feast is there. They'll only eat dried up fruits and berries. And why do they go through the austerity? They want to forcefully break this knot, Hridya Granthi. There is no question of them cultivating. I mean, if you go to forest and you eat dried, okay, imagine you go to the forest and you eat fresh, ripened mangoes. Life in forest is far better than in Pune city, isn't it? inorganic organic. So, forest He is getting fresh, organic mangoes, apples, bananas. How many think that life is better than this life? I mean, what austerity are you performing there? So what is the condition when they go to forest? They have to only eat the dried foods. Dhruma did that. In fact, he didn't eat only. He was drinking water and not. So they will not cultivate any new taste. So this is something to understand. The concept of Hridya Ganthi. So, I mean, at least consciously we can. So we should not be too excited to go to newer, newer places, to see them or to taste newer foodstuffs. We actually acting on a bodily consciousness. So matter and spirit are knotted by false ego. Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport. The identification of oneself with matter, which is called Hridya Granthi. So what is the technical term Hridya Granthi means? The identification with the matter itself is called as Hridya Granthi. Exists for all conditioned souls and it becomes more and more tightened when there is too much affection for sex life. Now why particularly sex life have been said in that regard? Because then it leads to multiplication of your relationship and everything, everything else. You know, then you have a family, then you have more responsibilities, then you have to earn, and so forth. That's as I said, this is something which increases your Hridya uh, Ganti. Anyways, all uh, right. Then Prabhupada concludes, no material weapon is needed to cut this Hridya Ganti. Uh, how do you break this Hridya Ganti? The tight knot. What is according to Bhagavad Gita? 
which chapter talks about breaking this bond of hridaya vinanti 15th chapter very good at least ha huh? first was with the weapon of knowledge with a sword not weapon with a sword of knowledge and detachment cut this hard knots of your false identification knowledge and detachment <laughs> and prior to that was already spoke about how do you receive mercy of the supreme lord three things are mentioned vacha vegam asa krodha vegam following the rules and regulations following tapasya and sacrificing one's riches in the service of the lord we cannot change a system and not following a system we can't ask why final product is different than as expected no it's just not going to happen because not follow system text number 5 uh, devuti followed instruction of kardama muni she was fully faithful respectful towards the direction of her husband kardama was one of the prajapatis and like this she began to worship the lord text number 6 lord appeared in the womb of uh mother devuti so text number 6 purport proper makes a point i believe this is the verse only right yeah entered the semen of kardama muni and appeared in devuti just as fire comes from wood in a sacrifice oh lord entered into the semen which means his birth is also like our birth we are also born through virya right uh of a purush then popat explains well even if that is the case lord still remains who is he supreme personality of godhead and then popat argues in the purport well krishna in the which chapter of bhagavad gita or which shloka in bhagavad gita krishna says i appear by my own internal energy ha huh? chapter 4 अवतार If he can appear from the nostril, why can't he appear from the womb of a mother? No, no, no. That is not possible. Why? My birth is the same as his. If my birth is the same as his, then his birth is the same as mine. So, which verse, which verse in the Bhagavad Gita, we say that the people who think that I am the same as them, they are called the king of the world. Huh? Avaj Anand. Anand. Ha. Manusham Tanam Ashrita. Ha. Which chapter is this? वर्ष नंबर नाइन पॉइंट इलेवन कितनी बार भगवदगीता पढ़ाई हर साल भगवदगीता सो आई जस्ट देवर टेस्टिंग ऑल ऑफ यू ओके नाइन पॉइंट इलेवन सो करके एनी वेज वॉट वेवर बी हाँ सो दैट्स आवर प्रॉपर मैशन आई लाइक टेक्स्ट नंबर सेवन एंड सींग द लॉर्ड इज अपियर टन टन एंड टन डेमी गॉड्स आते हैं ना फिर नाचने के लिए तो नाचने गाने का वर्णन आता है आगे द सिंगिंग डांसिंग एंड वॉट एपन नेक्स्ट द सिंग एंड डांस and then what is the next activity if you read bhagavatam is a very set and then pushpa vishek so that word whole ceremony goes on the appearance of the lord and text number 9 brahma ji comes and text number 10 talks about are bhaiya kapil dev ka janam kyu hua okay how many of you i have made this point many times i hope you have captured this every incarnation has a purpose yes or no what is evidence yes to bola What is the evidence that every incarnation has a purpose? Let's go back to Bhagavad Gita again. Bhagavatam, पढ़ाने के बाद तुमसे Bhagavatam के reference पूछूँगा अभी Bhagavad Gita के पूछता हूँ. बताओ Bhagavad Gita में कहाँ कहाँ है कि हर अवतार का एक purpose होता है? Yes, yada yada hi dharmasya. Those four point seven and four point eight. Krishna makes it very clear. जब जब धर्म का ग्लानी होता है, अधम बढ़ता है, तब तब मैं अवतरित होता हूँ. And that the destruction of the dharma may happen different ways. Now let me ask you, what destruction of dharma had happened at the time of uh, when Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita? We recently discussed in Sunday evening presentation that uh, you know, uh, right after Rajasvi Yagya, before Krishna went to Vrindavan, his final visit, he had killed all the demons, and the last demon to be killed by Krishna was Dantavakra. And after that, Krishna said, "I am not going to pick any weapons," and that is why Krishna said during the Kurukshetra, "I am not going to pick a weapon." If all the demons had been killed by Krishna. You know, so why did Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita? What dharma Krishna was establishing? 
ಬಟ್ ನಾಶವ ಧರ್ಮ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಯು ವಾಟ್ ಗ್ಲಾನಿ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಗ್ಲಾನಿ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದರ್ ಅಸುರ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ವಾಂಡ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ಲಾನಿ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಸೊ ವೈ ಡಿಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟೂ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಟೂ ಎಂ ಪರಂಪರಾ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಇಮಂ ರಾಜ ಋಷಿಯೋ ವಿಧು ಸಾ ಕಾಲನೇಹ ಮಹತ ಯೋಗ ನಷ್ಟ ಪರಂತ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಗ್ಲಾನಿ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ರೀಸನ್ ಸೊ ವೈ ಡಿಡ್ ಕಪಿಲ್ ದೇವ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ರೀಸನ್ ದ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಬಿನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಕಪಿಲ್ ದೇವ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ ಟು ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಯೋಗ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಗ್ಲಾನಿ ಆಲ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಡೇಷನ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಗ್ಲಾನಿ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟೆನ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ವರ್ಸ್ ಭಗವಂತ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸತ್ವೇನಾಂಶೇನ ಶತ್ರುಹನ್ ತತ್ವಸಂಖ್ಯಾನ ವಿಘ್ನಾಪ್ತ ಜಾತ ವಿದ್ವಾನ ಜಸ್ವರಾಜ್ ಮೈತ್ರಿಯ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಓ ಕೆಲವರ ದಯನಿಮಿ ದನ್ ಬೋಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿಸ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಅಕ್ವಾರಿಂಗ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಕುಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾಜ್ ಇನ್ ಎಸ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಓ ದೇವತಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ದ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಪಿಲ ದೇವ್ to establish re establish sankhya yoga these are some basic things which should be very very clear so 11th verse onwards uh brahma ji begins to worship the lord uh you can read this aspect of yourself like this uh you know i'll move forward uh karke and then lord brahma praises gadama muni devhuti uh his their nine daughters and proposes the marriage of uh, devuti's nine daughters to his own nine sons like that text number 15 once again in this chapter how marriage should happen what are the considerations mai already kai baar bol chuka hu if i speak this time also people will think i'm starting a matrimonial site or something <laughs> i have already spoken in previous discussions how marriage has to happen and all that so i don't want to repeat that point if you want you can read text number 15 for yourself or refer to the previous recordings i have elaborated that a lot all right text number 16 i know lord has appeared and let's take text number 17 where once again what is the goal of lord appearance now brahma ji is speaking what does lord brahma ji says text number 17 ಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗೇನ ಕರ್ಮಣ ಮುಧುರಂಜತ ಹಿರಣ್ಯಕೇಶ ಪದ್ಮಾಕ್ಷೋ ಪದ್ಮಾಕ್ಷ ಪದ್ಮ ಮುದ್ರ ಪದಾಂಬುಜ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಮಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಕಪಿಲ್ ಮುನಿ ಹು ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರೈಸ್ ಬೈ ಹಿಸ್ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ಹೇರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಐ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ಅ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ಸ್ will uproot the deep rooted desire for work in the material world according to sanskrit terminology our nature to work what is it call us our strong attachment to work so strong so strong krishna speaks about this thing in bhagavad gita also what is it called kshanam huh prabhu ji i thought you are asking the verse no 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 what is this because i have this is something which i have discussed many times so while having a discussion i am having a mcq also for all of you <laughs> without giving an options i am giving hints what does it mean it is mentioned will approve the deep rooted desire for work in the material world these are some concepts which we should be very clear about it soul is always active so no 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 i am asking sanskrit word what is that concept not the you know english equivalent of it deep rooted desire for work in the material world we all are condition these are set conditioning and that is called as liklo agar yaad nahi rehta to karmatmakam buddhi is called as karmatmakam buddhi our intelligence tinged with you know karma do you agree we cannot sit idle for even a moment the moment we sit idle the mind will start to it will start thinking about what to do what not to do and all that that is called as karmatmakam buddhi and to purify us of this karmatmakam buddhi therefore krishna told arjuna you cannot because being a kshatriya you are too consumed by these thoughts you cannot go to the forest and think you will meditate therefore for you to purify your karmatmakam buddhi the means has to be karma itself but now you do not do karma for yourself for whom you do karma you do karma for me you do a sanction karma which i have approved 
without being attachment to the results. So now, again, going back to the very fundamental concept here, do you acknowledge we all have this Karmatma Kambuddhi? And another example of Karmatma Buddhi is so, which is given in the 12th chapter from verses 8 to 12. 8th is talked about sannyasi, 9th talks about Brahmachari, and 10th, 11, 12 goes on. There Krishna says, okay, let's, let's not go over there. Let's come back to the, uh, you know, yoga letter. Why it is called Sakama Karma Yoga, Nishkam Karma Yoga? What is the difference between Sakama Karma Yoga and Nishkam Karma Yoga? Karma Yoga. Sakam Karma Yoga and Nishkam Karma Yoga. <coughs> Sakam, aapki ichcha hai. Nishkam, aapki ichcha nahi hai. Fine? That is simple. Sakam and Nishkam. Which means Nishkam Karma Yoga, you are detached from the results. If you are detached from the results, why are you working? Have you ever thought? <laughs> I'll repeat again. Karma Yoga is a two types. Sakam Karma Yoga, Nishkam Karma Yoga. Sakam, fill with ichhas. I want my result. Okay? A little bit I'll use in the service of the Lord. Nishkam, I have no desire only. And that is what Arjuna expressed in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. He said, my dear Lord, very good. I have no desire only. Let me go to the forest. Then Krishna says, Yat yat achati shishta tatta devata rojana. He wanted to say, let me quit. I have no desires. So, if there is nishkam, there is no desire, then why are you working? Why are you working? For the pleasure of the Lord, like how Arjuna ah. did. Attachment to work. To... Yes, attachment to the type of work. You still cannot give that. This is the deep-rooted karmatma kambuddhi. This is deep rooted. And then after that, Nishkam Karma Yoga comes what? <laughs> According to the yoga letter, then comes Jnana Yoga. Then comes Buddhi Yoga. And then comes Bhakti Yoga. So Nishkam, Nishkam means you're detached from the results, but you will. Okay, how many of you agree here? When it comes to services, you become very happy when you get to do service what you want to do. Please raise your hand. And how many of you, you know, when you say, do this, hmm, Kisi aur ka bolo. how many of you agree with this? this? You see how attached to the type of work I want to do? Are you getting this concept? This is Karmatma Kambuddhi. We are fine. My dear Lord will do some service to you. But karunga wohi jo mein jata Then I will become happy. Yes or no? So fine, we should do some of it. But you cannot call it pure devotional service. You are purifying yourself a little bit. Therefore, 70% of service contribution should be what has been instructed to us. Just to maintain our body and soul together. Otherwise, soul will run away. <laughs> 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 you know, if you do so much surrender immediately, then I will only follow. That you know, your soul will disappear from the body. I you I will so just to keep the body and soul together, you can do 20-25% or 20% of what you like to do. But maximum purification happens when we do what we want to do. How many of you agree? I understood now, even in my service, I am only happy doing what I want to do. Please raise your hands. I am only happy. I am not saying you are not doing service, but I am saying you find your happiness only in doing what you want to do. That's my point. How many of you? Please raise your hand. Let's take a look in online fellows. Okay, let me see the hands of all of those who are from India. <laughs> those are serving here. <laughs> so, how many of you agree? We become happy when, you know, we become self-inspired. We become self-motivated when I get to do what I want to do it. And we are so self-inspired, we don't want to ask only anyone. Then somebody comes behind, Aray, ruk jao, galat direction mein ja rahe ho. This is an example of Karmatma Buddhi. Is it making sense? Can you imagine how deep rooted it is? It is not so easy. It's not so easy. We just got to stick with what Popa says, then things will become easy. I don't know from where I started, where I ended. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Lord appeared to approve the deep rooted desire for work in this material world. Is that clear? That's the point here. Text number 18, Brahmaji speaks to. Uh, Devahuti, that Lord will be appearing. Then he glorifies the Lord in text number 19. And then Matthew Muni says in text number 20 that Brahmaji, then he goes back along with his four Kumaras and Nadmani. After that, uh, the sages get married 
to the nine daughters. That is text number 21. And 20 to 23 gives the names of the sages who got married to the nine daughters. Uh, and the names of daughters are also given, I believe, here like this. And then text number 25 talks about how the sages uh, and the Brahmaji went back to his place. Text number 26 begins the discussion of how after this episode have ended, where Brahmaji and Devtas have offered respect to the Lord, spoken to the Devuti and Kadamamani, got the daughters of Devuti married to the nine sages. Now, Kadamamani begins to speak with Kapalamani, who apparently has now taken birth. Text number 26. Sacha Vitranam Triyugam Agnaya Vibudhash Rishabham Vivikta Upasangam Ya Pranamay Samabhashata. When Kadamani understood that the Supreme Lord had descended, Kadama approached him in a secret place, offered obeisances, and spoke as follows. And we'll take a look at the prayers now. I'll read the translations where needs to have a discussion. Text number 27. Kadamani said, Oh, after a long time, the demigods of this universe have become pleased with suffering souls who are in material entanglement because of their own misdeeds. Why? Uh, you know. Oh, after a long time, the demigods of this universe have become pleased with the suffering souls who are in the material entanglement because of their own misdeeds. In other words, because, you know, uh, they prayed to you, you have appeared. So, because finally they saw the suffering state of the humanity. And therefore, they pleaded to you. Text number 28. After many births, mature yogis, by complete trance in yoga, endeavor in secluded places to see the lotus feet of the supreme, uh, in secluded places to see the lotus feet of the supreme personality of Godhead. Which means one has to perform yoga for a long, long time. And Papa says, one cannot practice such kind of Ashtang yoga in a city or in a public park. You might see some yoga going outside also. <laughs> and declare that he has become God simply by some exchange of dollars. <laughs> Text number 29. Not considering the negligence of ordinary households. So what is happening here is, why this verse is spoken by Kadamuni? He's saying, my dear Lord, can you imagine, just a little bit try to understand the psychology. Okay, let me read the text number 29 and see if you capture something what's happening here. Yeah, give me just tool enough, something to keep this. I'm reading out the text number 29. Not considering the negligence of ordinary householders like us, that very supreme personality of God had appears in our homes just to support his devotees. What is happening here? Kadamuni, but natural, this is the nature of a devotee. Not that he has to uh, pretend to be humble, but devotee is humble. And this is, this is just a representation of that. So he said, my dear Lord, we suffering jivas, looks like you appeared because devtas have become pleased at us. Therefore, they pray to you, you have appeared. And then the next verse, this is the second verse, Kadamuni said, My dear Lord, the yogi is a great transcendentalist. They meditate on you for a long, long time, maybe multiple lifetimes. Then they are able to withheld you in their heart. I am a poor grasta of a poor consciousness, no qualification. Yet you are so kind that you have appeared in my house. Who is saying? Not somebody who is chanting 16 hours for the last five years. Prabhu, I need to darshan the name of the Lord. I need to give the name of the Lord. I need to give the name of the Lord. I need to give the name of the Lord. I need to give the name of the Lord. I need to give the name of the Lord. In the Kadama Muni, you perform 10,000 years of penance, tapasya. When Lord appeared to him and gave darshan. After marriage also for years and years together, he was engaged in performing his, you know, dharma. And then after a long time, by his mystic opulence, like this, he manifested aerial mansion. And then his mystic opulence, which I didn't discuss, otherwise that would have become a brahmachari class, so I skipped that portion, uh, that he manifested himself in the nine forms. You know, and that's how the nine daughters of Devati were born. Such a qualified person can say, Prabhu, how can you appear in our house? Which is a poor grasta. Poor means not financially, low in consciousness. Uh, I would request all of you meditate on this aspect. You know, a question raised, how can devotees say like this? Are you advanced? 
Why are you saying you are like this? But this is just a natural thing. Uh, but we should not imitate. We should not pretend uh, to speak those words. Uh, but this is just a natural consciousness when we understand the greatness of the Lord. When we understand the greatness of the Lord, please understand, you don't only understand the greatness of the Lord, you also understand the greatness of His energies. Then only, I'll make this point, I've made it point before also, it is an advanced devotee who do, does not take a risk with material energy. Those who think I have become advanced, therefore I can take a risk with material energy is actually a neophyte devotee. I'll repeat again. I made this point to all of you in another forum also. Those who are advanced devotees, they would not risk fiddling with material energy. But those who are not advanced, those who think have become advanced, they think because I'm advanced, I can fiddle with material energy is actually a neophyte. Because when you understand the greatness of the Lord, you also understand the greatness of His potencies. Then you understand Devi Esha Gunamai Mamamaya Dratya Abhi hamne sirf memorize kara hai. Samjha nahi hai. Samjha kya hai? Then when we become alert, when we don't fiddle unnecessary risk of our life in connection to material energy. Okay. Um, lesson on humility. That was a discussion. Text number 29. Um, please do some contemplation on that. Then text number 30. Brahmaji said why Lord appeared. And Kadamani also says why Lord appeared. Swayam vakyam ratam kartum avatino si me grehe chikursho bhagavan gnanam bhakta namana vardana. Kadamani gives not one but three reasons for Lord's appearance. First, my dear Lord, who are always increasing the honor of your devotees. Why? Because Lord promised. You know, so now you have fulfilled the words and you have kept my honor. Isn't it? Second, I have descended in my home just to fulfill your word. And third, to disseminate the process of the real knowledge, Sankhya, Yoga. And then text number 31 talks about the Lord's form. My dear Lord, although you have no material form, you have your own innumerable forms. They truly are your transcendental forms, which are pleasing to your devotee. They truly are your transcendental forms, which are pleasing to your devotees. Then Popa dedicates his Papa, talking about, there are so many evidences from scriptures that talks about Lord's personal form, which is beyond the jurisdiction of more somatic nature. Text number 32. My dear Lord, your lotus feet are the resolve that always deserve to receive worshipful homage from all great sages, eager to understand the absolute truth, your full and opulence, renunciation, fame, knowledge, strength, and beauty. And therefore, I surrender myself to your lotus feet. Aishwarya, Vairagya, Yasho, Avabodha, Virya Shriya Purtam Aham Prapadye. You are full Aishwarasya Samagrasya. And then text number 33, very important verse. I'll not really have time to get into it, but I'll request you to read the purport. It gives Kadamuni now surrenders to the Lord and he defines 10 attributes of the Lord. Very beautiful verse. Param Pradhanam Purusham Mahantam Kalam Kavim Tri Vritam Lokapalam Atmanu Bhutyanu Gata Prapancham Swachanda Shaktim Kapilam Prapadye. Let's repeat. Param Pradhanam Purusham Mahantam Param Pradhanam Purusham Mahantam Kalam Kavim Trivetam Lokapalam Kalam Kavim Trivetam Lokapalam Atmanu Bhutyanu Gatha Prapancham Atmanu Bhutyanu Gatha Prapancham Swachanda Shaktim Kapilam Prapadye Swachanda Shaktim Kapilam Prapadye So there are 10 attributes of the Lord. This could be a worthy verse to memorize. Uh, Param, you know, we have heard Param Brahma Param Dhamma, Pavitram Paramahambhuvan. So Param means beyond the modes of mental nature, transcendental. Pradhanam, Pradhan, Supreme, you know, Pradhan, Pradhanacharya, Pradhanacharya, what is that? 
right to pradhan you understood the word pradhan simple purush so krishna is only purush everything is prakriti purush mahantam propadaish meaning who is the origin of the material world kalam kalosmi time kavi kavi is not necessarily means poetic kavi means somebody who is very learned so proper translation is fully cognizant trivatam three modes of material nature lokapal lokapal matter uh, of the universe then swachhand shaktim uh, who is powerful like there the 10 attributes which are described about the lord and this is you can read the purport for more details on it text number 34 and now he expresses after glorifying the lord uh, i take your shelter and i have a desire that i would like to renounce are you why renounce today i have something to ask from you who are the lord of all the living entities since i have now been liberated by you from my debts to my father since all my desires are fulfilled what debt kadam when he had to his father who was the father brahma ji and brahma ji had ordered him instructed him to create progeny become prajapati and he says because you have fulfilled that desire by appearing as a son i am free of the debt because now son will further procreate you know the uh, the lineage continues like that i wish to accept the order of an itinerant mendicant renouncing his family life i wish to wander about free from lamentation thinking always of you in my heart wow this is such a beautiful subject matter baba why do you want to leave prabhu ghar mein aa gaye hain why do you want to why he wants to leave does anyone feeling little little like kya chal rahi hai am i only feeling that are prabhu ke ghar mein aa gaye tum bol rahe hum ja rahe hain jangal jayenge itna prem hai jangal se what is his logic it doesn't make sense but it makes lot of sense it has a very deep import let's take a look at the purport actually sanyas or renunciation of material house or life please show the screen necessitates complete absorption in krishna consciousness and immersion in the self hari krishna one does not take sanyas please pay attention one does not take sanyas he is saying i want to take sanyas the proper talks about what is a goal is a very important verse for those who are planning to join brahmachari ashram or who is living in brahmachari ashram one does not take sanyas free from family responsibilities and the renounce order of life to make another family or to create embarrassing transcendental fraud in the name of sanyas the sanyas's business is not to become proprietor of so many things amass money from the innocent public you can highlight one by one and this you can put in now sort of a brahmachari also i mean why did we become brahmachari प्रभु क्या करूं मैंने जब बहुत टेंशन देता था यू नो आई वॉन्टेड फ्रीडम फ्रॉम टेंशन वाई डिड यू बिकेम ब्रह्मचारी प्रभु आई एम सींग हाउ फैमिलीज आर स्ट्रगलिंग लेडीज आर आउट ऑफ कंट्रोल फगेट अबाउट लेडीज द किड्स आर आउट ऑफ कंट्रोल शादी भी नहीं हुई है पहली भयभीत है भविष्य में सोच रखा है सो आई विल बिकम ब्रह्मचारी इज एट द पर्पज यू ज्वाइन वाई डिड कदम क्विट होम वेन यू हैड द लॉर्ड हेट इज होम सो दैट यू कैन इंक्रीज इज ऑब्जॉर्बन ऑन द लॉर्ड and he felt if i go to the forest what he is going to do he is going to absorb himself more that said is an event others what is the point of quitting and he set an example and that is what propose is taking a sanyasi is proud that is always thinking of krishna within himself of course there are two kinds of devotees of the lord one is called gushtanandi which means those who are preachers and have always followers for preaching the and have many followers for preaching the glories of the lord who living who live among those many many followers just to organize missionary activities and then other is called as atmanandi self satisfied do not take the risk of preaching work or right, do not take the risk of huh? preaching is a risk they remain there for alone in the god alone with god in this classification was kadamani kadamani was bhajanandi or atmanandi he wanted to be free from all anxieties and remain alone within his heart with the supreme personality of godhead parivraja means an itinerant mendicant a mendicant sanyasi who should not live anywhere for more than 3 days he must be always moving because his duty is to move from door to door and enlighten people on krishna kaise the point is why did kadamuni uh, left his house or life he wanted to fully dedicate himself in 
absorption of the lot. Therefore, somebody who quits, uh, you know, uh, uh, opportunity to take responsibility of family life and purify oneself through that, takes to Brahmacharya Ashram, their job profile is described here. It is only to engage oneself in the service of the Lord, nothing else. Text number 35. Lord speaks to uh, our Kadamani. Shri Bhagavan Vacha, Maya Proktam Hilokasya Pramanam Satya Lokike Atajani Maya Tubhyam Yat Avocham Ritamune. The personality required a couple of said, Whatever I speak, whether directly or in the scriptures, is authoritative on all aspects for the people of the world. Oh, many, because I told you before that I would become your son. I have descended to fulfill this truth. Uh, five star purpose. And the third line in the purple purpose. Right? Why was Kadamani prepared to leave home to search out self realization or God realization? God Himself was present in His home. Why should He leave? Next time. But here he said, whatever is spoken in the Vedas, whatever is practiced in according to the injunction of the Vedas is to be accepted as authoritative society. Vedic authority says that a householder must leave home after his 50th year. Pancha Shodhavam Varam Vajit. One must leave his family life and enter the forest after the age of 50. Do you know why people living in the city do not, uh, you know, enter the forest after the age of 50? Because they Prabhu, I'm already concrete forest where are दूसरे <laughs> 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 Uh, there are many things, many things. Okay, let's take a look at it. This is bottom proper, very important. Next paragraph. Kadamuni practiced yoga very diligently as a brahmachari before his marriage. He became so powerful and attained so much mystic power that his father, Brahma, ordered him to marry and beget children. Even though he had the Lord as a son, few lines below, he had to respect the authority of the Vedas. This is a very important lesson. Even if one has God in his home as a son, one should still follow the Vedic. Injunction, which means it was time for his Vana Prastha. Next, Kadamani example is very instructive. For in spite of having the Supreme Personality, he left home just to obey the authority of Vedic injunctions. Kadamani states here the main purpose of his leaving home. While traveling all over the world as a mendicant, he should he would always remember the Supreme Personality Godhead within his heart and thereby be freed from all the anxieties of material existence. In the age of Kali Yuga, sannyas is prohibited, etc, 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 like this. Next, in Kali Yuga, the injunction, next paragraph, is that no one should accept sannyas. Okay, the going few lines below. The main purpose of sannyas life is to be in constant companionship with the Supreme Lord, either by thinking of Him within the heart or hearing of Him through oral reception. In this age, hearing is more important than thinking because one's thinking may be disturbed by mental agitation. But if one concentrates on hearing, he will be forced to associate with the sound vibration of Krishna. Krishna and the sound vibration Krishna are not different. So even loudly vibrates, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. He will be able to think of Krishna immediately. This process of chanting is the best process of self-realization. And they say, therefore, Lord Chaitanya preached so nicely for the benefit of all humanity. So, what are the reasons why Kadamani renounced in spite of having the Lord as a son? There are four reasons mentioned by Srila Vishnu Jagadhaku. First, to follow Vedic injunction that one should leave home at certain age. Second, to avoid the mixture of Dasya and Vasalya Bhav. He was fixated in his mood of Dasya. Now he would have to raise a, a, a Lord, then his mood will change from Vasalya to avoid that confusion. The Lord will make him renounce anyway. This is Vishnu Chakrati Thakur. The Lord will make him renounce anyway. Why don't renounce today? Fourth, more important is to worship and then remember the Lord constantly than to be in the even in the association of the Lord. What is more important? To remember is more important than being in the association of the Lord. We'll take the last verse for today. Text number 36. 
एतन्मे जन्म लोके अस्मिन् मुमुक्षणा दुराशयात् प्रसंख्यानाय तत्वानां सम्मत्या आत्मदर्शने माय अपीयरेंस इन दिस वर्ल्ड स्पेशली टू एक्सप्लेन द फिलॉसफी ऑफ संख्या व्हिच इज हाईली एस्टीम फॉर सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन बाय दोस डिजायरिंग फ्रीडम फ्रॉम द एंटेंगलमेंट ऑफ अननेसेसरी मैटेरियल डिजायर्स वंस अगेन आई हैव अपीयर टू टीच द वर्ल्ड अबाउट संख्या just one second now we'll just okay let's take one more verse text number 37 eshatma patho vyaktu nashta kale na bhuyasa tam pravartitam deham imam vidhi maya abratam this path of self realization which is difficult to understand has now been lost in the course of time why he wants to speak about it please know that i have assumed this body of kapila to introduce and explain the philosophy to human society again hare krishna a very important purport time factor is proposed right in the second paragraph in the middle the time factor is so pressing that in the course of time everything within this material world is spoiled or lost i'll conclude with the last question can you think of anything which you may call as uh transcendental got lost or destroyed with time one is sankhya yoga second is the knowledge of bhagavad gita transcendental got lost does anything else comes to your mind which got lost or destroyed with time that's a point the time factor is a very important point and concept regardless of who you become how great you become the laws of the material world gonna act you gonna grow old you gonna fall sick and eventually have to die we cannot it's not that because i have taken shelter of the lord i am not going to go through the old age and all those things so anything now this is lot has established even that was lost same kapil muni same krishna bhagavad gita what else has been lost or destroyed with time what you can classify as actually transcendental yes ishan pur ha huh? leela sali yes we discuss about it leela sali dwaka disappeared when that one disappeared uh disappear in the sense they always there but they manifesting aprakar lila okay what else varnashram ha huh? varnashram dharma varnashram dharma okay varnashram dharma well that we all know you know glani of dharma that happens so okay that can also be considered valid point what else Which deities in Vrindavan uh, built by, sorry, the temples in Vrindavan built by Goswamis. Ah, uh, not deities, temples. Deities are there even today. The temples built by Goswamis is one thing, but they were not Goswamis. They were Manjuris. Uh, Rupa, Sanatan, Jeeva, Gopal, Raghunath Das, Raghunath Bhatt Goswami. What is the interesting thing about them? They all were Manjuris, headed by Rupa Manjuri. and they all built temples from radha damodar to radha madan mohan radha govindev then we had radha uh, raman radha gopinath radha gokulanand what not even there and they did not even last for 100 years 1560 the first temple was built and 1670 the temples were broken when organism came in root okay anything else that comes to your mind which is destroyed with time as a factor and how important is to understand it is krishna only and is destructive potency kalos me ram mandir wo to mandir ho gaya na okay so correct mandir ho gaya what else what else what else anything else remaining yes kingdoms like for last one thousand years you are going by forever in the kingdoms okay that's not there is nothing transcendental about it transcendental means it is either set by lord or established by the pure devotees culture is lost varnashram oh. madam Okay, I hope you got the clue about it. That's how time calls me. Ah, uh, so we got to have a little deeper understanding of how Krishna as Kala acts. Ah, uh, whoever it is, even things established by Manjuris were destroyed. I know, <laughs> like that. Okay, so that's it for today's our discussion. As time is coming to close now, so just to do a quick recap of what we discussed, we talked about lamentation of Devahuti. Kadamani pacifies her, promises her for a son. The son is born. The devtas appear uh, and uh, you know offers 
make proper, make prayers to Devuti. Prior to that, we discuss the concept of Hridya Granthi. What is Hridya Granthi? We also talked about the concept of Karmatma Kambuddhi, like that. And then after Brahma Ji offers prayers, glorifies Kardama and Devahuti, then he arranges the marriage of Devuti's nine daughters with his nine sages. And Brahma Ji, after offering prayers to the Lord, he goes back. And then Kadamuni, what we're reading right now is Kadamuni speaking to Kapil Dev. He glorifies Kapil Dev. He describes the purpose of the descent. Then we talked about why does Lord appear? There is a purpose. And that purpose is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita is whenever there's a decrease in religion. What is Dharma Glani means? Dharma Glani does not only mean that there are more rogues walking on the street. Dharma Glani also means that the knowledge uh, system is destroyed. You know, just like Sankhya Yoga was destroyed, so Lord has appeared. Because if you don't have a knowledge system, of course, you will have rogues only. That's just a byproduct of it. And then after that, Lord Kapila begins to speak to Kadama Muni. Uh, like this, you know, um, you know, he also said, what's the purpose of my descent? Uh, like this. And Kadam Muni actually wanted to take permission of the Lord to become an itinerant monk, uh, to take renunciation. So question was raised, why would Kadam Muni, who has got Lord as a son, would want to walk to the forest? Four reasons are given. What are the four reasons? First reason is, he wanted to follow the authority of the scriptures. With time, one should take to renunciation. Vanaprastha and sannyas. What is the second reason? He was situated in Dasya Bhav. Then, otherwise, Vasale would have got mixed, would have disturbed his mood. Third, what was the reason? Four reasons we discussed. Why Kadamuni wanted to walk to the forest? Maybe one day he will have to renounce it. Yes. Anyways, anyways, Lord will make him renounce. So why not renounce? Today. Very nice. What is the fourth reason? To increase the absorption. Yes, yeah, to, to increase his absorption. Uh, I, I'll conclude with this, but I'm not saying it. This is what is clear from this. Even for Kadam Muni, despite having wife like Devahuti, he felt family life is disturbing. <laughs> All right. Okay, this is what the Tamil religion mentioned. He wanted to increase the absorption. He didn't want to go to the anxiety. The problem is not with the wife. The problem is the way the system is designed. You know, our encumbrances, our dependency, and so much keeps on increasing. Particularly, Sankhya Yoga is a discussion of renunciation. So, bear with me if I speak on renunciation. I'm not targeting anyone, but if it is mentioned, what can I do? You only mentioned, and we saw Vishnu Chakras Thakur saying, Kadamani didn't want any interest in his absorption. You might wonder, hey, how can he have interest in his absorption when you have a wife like Devahuti and a son like Kapila? Think about it. But because Sankhya Yoga, the path of renunciation, no disturbance, nothing. So that's how it has been described here. All right. So we'll pause here. Thank you for your kind attention. Jagadru Shila Prabhupada Ki. Any concluding points or comments? Particularly for those who often stay quiet, we'll take input from them. If not, huh? yes, uh, are there problems? Why am remembrance of the Lord, absorption of the Lord is uh, emphasized? Man mana bhava mad bhattu madhyadi maam namaskaru. Krishna says not once but twice. Because that is the only position or situation when Jivatma can be really happy. Because mind has to contemplate or something. If it doesn't contemplate on the Lord or the Lord's devotee, then it is going to contemplate something else. And everything else is unsteady and temporary. That will keep Jivatma always dissatisfied. Let me ask this. Uh, whatever success have you got in your life, has it made you satisfied or more dissatisfied? The nature of this world is, regardless of how much wealth, how much success, how much happiness you may get, it only increases our dissatisfaction. Why? It will mange more. Asi ye bhi ho gaya. Maja nahi aaya. Kuch aur lete hain. Isi aage lete hain. So, man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji mana. That's the only way the soul can find the solace and peace. And its true happiness is there in that. Therefore, uh, you know, remembrance of the Lord, cultivate, and cultivation of that is emphasized. That's a, our original constitution position. Okay. Yes, Prabhu. Kapil Muni or Kapil Dev? Kapil Muni, Kapil Dev, yes. 
there was one Kapil Muni who appeared around this in Kali Yuga, which Popan mentioned in the first canto. You know, he also taught Sankhya Yoga. But what uh, Sankhya Yoga is taught by Kapil Muni is not atheistic Sankhya Yoga. Sankhya Yoga means study of 24 elements. Where does Sankhya Yoga come from Bhagavad Gita? Where does Sankhya Yoga come from Bhagavad Gita? Second chapter. Second chapter. Pramukta. Pramukta. Uh, Sankhya Yoga. That is part of Jnana Yoga. What are you talking about? Chapter 13. You know, the study of soul. So, soul is a 24th element. The study of that is called a Sankhya Yoga. You know? So, if in case by the study of that, you minus Lord, then become atheistic. So, yeah. what Kapila of uh, Kali Yuga, Kapila Muni, who is there, he spoke of atheistic Sankhya Yoga. Papa, that is the first canto. But this Kapila Dev established. And this Kapila Dev, uh, no, yeah, this Kapila Dev, he spoke about Sankhya Yoga. And where Krishna or the Lord is the source of everything, like that. Fine. Anything else? Ha, huh. yes. So, the question is to whom did the daughters of Devati got married? Verses 24 25, I believe, are the verses where the names of the husbands who were the sons of Brahma, sages. So, Kadamuni and Devahuti, Kadamuni is a Prajapati. Original Prajapati is Brahma. And then the first son to follow in the footsteps of his father was uh, Kadamani. And through Kadamani's daughters, now rest of the progeny will come. Everything, all species came through now the nine daughters. Now through that, it will continue the whole thing. Like that. Okay. Jagaduru Shila Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna.